Coming up on this edition of SUTV News, a story on students drinking causes a big controversy at Concordia. NDSU Theater is celebrating 100 years. And in sports, Bison football goes for a 15-road win. This is SUTV News, and it starts now. Welcome to SUTV News, I'm Kayla Reamer. And I'm Delaney Freer. A story on students' alcohol use before campus events triggered a censorship controversy between Concordia College's student newspaper and its admission office. A staff member from the admissions office confiscated copies of the Concordian from the Newton Campus Center before an event held Thursday for prospective students and their families. In a statement, News editor Emma Connell said, We feel as if the matter has been resolved, as the admission office has given us an official apology. At this point, we're focusing on internal dialogues as a means to figure out how we can prevent this from happening again. We just want everyone to acknowledge the serious implications of censorship at any level and that censorship can happen anywhere. Society of Professional Journalists advisor Patrick Schmidt says the issue is concerning to him. Anytime that happens, I'm worried because it, it and especially since it happened just across the river, it shows it could happen here. The hope is uh, that it's not somebody who works for the university who's removing the papers, and I hope it doesn't ever come to that here, but that, that potential exists. Staff member who removed the papers has not been named. The Concordian operates under considerable freedom and is not previewed or censored by administrators. The partial government shutdown ended last Wednesday, but the bargain struck by Congress isn't exactly a solution. What Congress passed is only a continuing resolution. What this means is that they haven't gone through the whole budget process. Instead, they are funding the government for a few months at the same rate they were before. In the next couple months, Congress is supposed to be deciding on how much they're going to spend in the next budget. Well, what the, um, the House, the House <coughs> did, particularly the House Republicans, is that they said that they would not pass a uh, new budget, a new appropriation bill, uh, unless, um, uh, well, Obamacare was defunded, was the main thing that they wanted. And also going on at the same time is that you were reaching the debt ceiling for the federal government, which meant that... The federal government, or the Treasury Department, is only given so much to fund the debt. The shutdown happened because Congress was not giving the federal government permission to go beyond that debt ceiling. Living here in North Dakota, we know snow and cold temperatures are inevitable. But when exactly will the brunt of winter hit? SUTV's Bree Bachmeyer has a story on what's predicted for the upcoming winter. There really isn't a crystal ball to forecast the weather over an entire winter. Weather experts look at large-scale features and anomalies and try to use those to project what will happen in the winter. For this particular fall, most of those usually helpful signals conflict. Upcoming winter would be too far ahead and too optimistic to think that we can predict that far, especially given the conditions that uh, all the predictors are giving us no indication whether or not this winter is going to be above, below, or near normal. One of the most important features for predicting winter temperatures has to do with Arctic oscillation, which cannot be predicted long range because it can switch phases back and forth in a matter of a few weeks. So what was a mild winter can suddenly turn very cold. Last winter was an example of that. The first half of the winter was very mild. And then all of a sudden the Arctic Oscillation changed phase and starting from late January until well into spring, all of a sudden the winter turned very cold and wet. That was something that could not have been foreseen in the fall. Currently, the Climate Prediction Center is giving an equal chance for above, below and near normal conditions for the coming winter. An Arctic Oscillation doesn't provide an accurate prediction beyond a couple weeks or even a month. One thing's for certain is that right here in Fargo, even if we have a really mild winter, it would be considered hard winter in most parts of the world. So from that standpoint, it's going to be cold, it's going to snow, it's going to be windy, we're going to have wind chill, it's going to be a Fargo winter. Bree Bachmeyer, SUTV News. Another way meteorologists can predict winter is from the snow cover in Siberia. Over the next few weeks, if Siberia continues building up a deep snow pack, we could have a colder winter here in the northern plains. The diversion project for the Fargo-Moorhead is starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. With full congressional approval in sight, they have one more battle to overcome, federal money. Yesterday, the U.S. House authorized the proposed $1.8 billion flood protection project 
joining the Senate in approving the diversion. Differences between the bills will still have to be straightened out in a conference committee before it's signed into law. Diversion leaders and congressional representatives celebrated the passage of the water resources reform and development at the House, but no, this isn't the end. The next step is securing the nearly $810 million federal share, which will be a challenge. Pop singer Pink has postponed her concert at the Fargo Dome, originally scheduled for Sunday night. The singer is suffering from inflamed vocal cords and laryngitis. A concert promoter from the Live Nation Entertainment said the singer needed a longer vocal break after her two shows in Seattle on Sunday and Vancouver on Monday. It is under the doctor's order that she postponed her scheduled Fargo date. The concert is now scheduled for Saturday, January 11th. All tickets pur purchased for her concert this month will be honored on the rescheduled date. A distinguished NDSU alum is doing his best to help others succeed. Arlen Lehom, who received the Distinguished Alum Award this week, gave a seminar about career-related experiences and shared some of his knowledge. The Distinguished Alumni Award program is sponsored by each of the colleges at NDSU and recognizes accomplishments of outstanding alumni as well as educating students by introducing them to successful alumni in their fields. Lehome is the Executive Director of North Central Regional Association of Agriculture Experiment Stations and has many other accomplishments. Earning both his bachelor's and master's from NDSU and his doctorate from the University of Nebraska, Lehome has some helpful advice for students. You have to be right on your technical skill sets but really spend time in the soft skill set area. A broad category of emotional intelligence is really critical. Uh, and that's learning about your emotions, learning how to call the emotions that you're feeling, being able to manage those emotions, and also uh, to be able to read other people's body language and to have a relationship management. Along with many of his accomplishments, Lehom also co-wrote a book titled Increasing the Odds of High Performance Teams, Lessons Learned. The book was published by Michigan State University Press in 2006. Good news for students graduating this December. North Dakota has a record low unemployment record at 2.7%. Job Service North Dakota points out that North Dakota's unemployment average is considerably lower than the national average, which sits at 7.3%. For the soon-to-be graduate, it means get busy, prepare your resume, and apply for jobs. In North Dakota, companies are hiring and students should be able to find work. I think it's an advantage being in North Dakota. We have the opportunity to get jobs, unlike uh, a lot of other states, it's a lot more difficult. But there's actually a lot of exciting things going on in North Dakota right now, especially at a place like NDSU, where um, we've seen some growth in our, our department, my English department, recently. Forbes magazine recently named North Dakota this year's second best state for business and careers. North Dakota State University is celebrating 100 years of theater. This centennial year means extra guest artists and more happening on campus. This and more after this week's seven day forecast. The future is constantly unfolding. No one knows better than those preparing for it. Every week, NDSU's student-run television organization, the Bison Information Network, brings you SUTV News with news about NDSU, the campus community, and current events affecting you. Watch SUTV News on Cable One, Channel 14, Friday and Saturday at 9 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. Deke's Pizza, prices with a student in mind. Fast delivery and conveniently open until 3 a.m. Order by phone at 701-235-0708. Order online at deekspizza.com or order with Deke's easy to use mobile app. NDSU, make Deke's your choice for pizza this semester. That's Deke's, 
Great pizza that won't empty your pockets. SUTV News is brought to you by Stop and Go. Stop and Go, we're always there. Welcome back. North Dakota State University is celebrating 100 years of theater. This centennial year means extra guests, artists, and more happening on campus. SUTV's Delaney Freer has a story. Little Country Theater was founded in 1914 by an innovative professor named Alfred Arvold. It was renamed after Ruben Askenaz, who helped fundraise. Now NDSU is remembering its past. We officially opened our 100th season with a, a student who graduated from the department in the 70s, and he gave a very cool speech about the background of the department, where it's been and where it's going. And so we're, we're very excited about it, and we're trying to let as many people know as possible. The theater's latest play was called Handing Down the Names and followed the struggles of a German family. These types of cutting-edge plays help the theater program continually grow. This department is uh, making leaps and bounds and becoming one of those um, destination places uh, where students want to come to to train and learn. And the NDSU Musical Theater Program has 74 musicals under its belt since it began in 1952 under the direction of Fred Walsh. The program has a large family feel with a student-faculty ratio of only 6 to 1. A lot of these students are coming from small towns and they're overwhelmed just by Fargo and just campus has more students than their, their hometown does. And so I think we provide that kind of smaller atmosphere and yet we're a department that's doing big, big things. The theater program has a lot planned for its centennial year. There's always something going on around here. There's lots going on. So uh, if you're looking for an active theater department, especially in the 100th uh, centennial season, here it is. Delaney Free reporting, SUTV News. NDSU theater students have gone on to find great success, such as working on the Jimmy Fallon set, acting in the TV show Lost, and performing Billy Elliot on Broadway. In February, the theater is performing Sweeney Todd, and after the show, audience members will have access to free haircuts and pie. The Information Technology Expo was held yesterday in the Memorial Union Great Plains Ballroom. IT division staff and campus partners showcased IT services and resources that can benefit students' work. The expo was held from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. and kicked off with an NDSU Information Technology Roadmap Keynote addressed by Interim Vice President Mark Wallman, a technology fair, presentations, panel discussions, and demonstrations for a variety of technologies were all parts of the event. The expo is hosted by the Information Technology Division and campus partners that provide and support IT services. At the NDSU Equine Center, just three miles west of campus, riders and ropers met for the 48th annual Bison Stampede Rodeo. The event included bull riding, barrel racing, roping, and bronc riding. Students from more than 20 schools in the Great Plains region competed for points to qualify them for College National Final Rodeo in Wyoming. This was the last rodeo of the fall, but for some, there's more to rodeo than just the competition. I think it's been a great experience, the whole rodeo lifestyle. I've loved it. I think it's great that our college has a team. I wish more people knew about it because a lot of people don't. You meet a lot of new people, so I think it's great. Even if you're not traveling, I think it's really great and fun to do the club. Oh, man, it's nothing like it. I mean, I played baseball. I played football. I love rodeo, though. While the points were gathered, NDSU's women's team ranked third and the men's team ranked ninth. After the break, we'll give you a look inside the life of being a residence assistant. Stay with us. The future is constantly unfolding. No one knows better than those preparing for it. Every week, NDSU's student-run television organization, the Bison Information Network, brings you SUTV News with news about NDSU, the campus community, and current events affecting you. Watch SUTV News on Cable One, Channel 14. 
Friday and Saturday at 9 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. Jitters is your home for quality coffee drinks. Whether you crave an espresso, iced coffee, mocha, or macchiato, Jitters has just what you need. Now featuring breakfast foods like caramel rolls, bagels, and more, be sure to get your day started right. Located on 12th Avenue North, Jitters has a friendly, relaxed atmosphere with Wi-Fi capability to get all of your studying done on time. Get your fix only at Jitters. Deke's Pizza, prices with a student in mind. Fast delivery and conveniently open until 3 a.m. Order by phone at 701-235-0708. Order online at deekspizza.com or order with Deke's easy to use mobile app. NDSU, make Deke's your choice for pizza this semester. That's Deke's, great pizza that won't empty your pockets. SUTV News is a production of the Bison Information Network in conjunction with North Dakota State University's Department of Communication Broadcast Program. For more information, go to www.ndsubin.com. Welcome back to SUTV News. Being a resident assistant, more commonly known as an RA in one of the residence halls on campus, can be a tough job. SUTV's Nate Manning gives us a look at the challenges and rewards of the job. There are 110 total RAs on campus, but before they could take the job, they first had to decide to pursue it. I like being in the leadership role and being able to connect with people and help them get th to their vision, their purpose. So I just thought RA was a good fit for me. A big challenge being an RA is managing schoolwork and your RA duties. It's a struggle, you know, you definitely can't put too much on your plate. You have to just take one at a time and, you know, have a, have a goal at the end of the week to get up by. Challenges of being an RA don't stop there. There are 15 residence halls on campus and 11 of those are for freshmen. Making sure their first year experience is a positive one is arguably the most important part of the job. I am the RA, but I also want them to think of as, a, as my friend. So um, our relationships right now with my floor, it's great, you know. We treat each other just like we're normal friends. There are definitely times when I have to step in as, you know, knowing the rules, having to, you know, keep stuff contained. But I do see it as it should be more of a friendship type thing with minimal having to correct actions, but being there. The job can be stressful, but the experience is something these individuals can hold on to forever. I've met so many people, interacting with people, and I've learned a lot from people. And the relationships I've made now I can still have that outside of my RA world, and that's been really awesome. Nate Manning reporting, SU TV News. The application process for being an RA for the 2014-2015 school year begins next semester. There are many things to love about the fall season. This week for Sidewalk Stampede, we asked students what their favorite part about this time of the year is. All right, so tell me, what is your favorite thing about fall? I'd say that my favorite thing about fall is probably the colder weather. Yeah, it's pretty cold out. You're probably one of the few people that actually likes cold weather. <laughs> Maybe, but I'm probably in a good place for that then, right? Yeah, <laughs> Um, I like when the days are pretty cold and you can just wear like a sweater, you don't have to wear a jacket, and the sun is on you just to keep you warm enough. Uh, football season, to be honest. Yeah, football is pretty good. I mean, NDSU is playing right now. What's your favorite team? Uh, college football, of course, NDSU, yeah. and then uh, my family has some ties to Iowa, so. I love the colors. Yeah. The fall leaves are awesome this year. I know they are. <laughs> leaves. Falling leaves. Yeah? It just gets so beautiful. <laughs> what about the color? You like the colors? Yeah, I like the colors very much, yeah. Definitely the colors of the leaves and the photogenic nature of it. Yeah, the leaves have been a popular answer today. 
joining us now is sports reporter Sam Jones. What is your guys' favorite thing about fall? I love pumpkin spice lattes. Yeah. I mean, I guess my favorite thing about it is that it's closer to Christmas. Yeah, it actually is pretty nice. I like that there are multiple sports to watch. You know, there's a lot more major league sports in play right now. But uh, speaking of sports, we have all your bison football and volleyball highlights coming up next. The NDSU Bookstore, where every true fan and alum goes to get their pride on. Gear up with a variety of high quality t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, and more. Don't forget about Scratch Off Friday. Before every Bison football home game, you have a chance to get as much as 50% off all your clothing and gift items. Your next Scratch Off Friday is November 8th. I'm Mariah, and I'm at bus because not only does it save me money, but with 20 different routes, it makes getting around Fargo much more convenient. I'm at bus. Do you? Deke's Pizza. Prices with a student in mind. Fast delivery and conveniently open until 3 a.m. Order by phone at 701-235-0708. Order online at deekspizza.com or order with Deeks' easy-to-use mobile app. NDSU. Make Deeks your choice for pizza this semester. That's Deeks. Great pizza that won't empty your pockets. <laughs> SU TV Sports is brought to you by Shields. Ready for your next big adventure? Welcome to Shields. Welcome back. The Bison football team took a 14-game road winning streak into last Saturday's game at Southern Illinois. The Salukis possessed the nation's fourth-ranked rushing defense, but that would not stop the Bison. Let's head out to Saluki Stadium for the highlights. Late in the first quarter, Corey Faulkner would find Stephen McKinney for the 13-yard catch and pitch, and the Skookies would strike first on that touchdown right there at, in the, late in the second quarter after SIU had a field goal. There would be about two minutes left. NDSU gets on the scoreboard. Brock, Brock Jensen finds Zach Braw for 55 yards. SIU would lead at halftime 10-7, to seven, as you, you can see uh, him scoring right there. Early in the second half, early in the third, John Crockett takes the handoff, 10-yard touchdown. The Bison would lead 14 to 10. The very next Bison possession, Crockett again. Just look at that speed. He takes this one in from 26 yards out, and the Bison start to pull away. 21 seconds left in the third. For the third time in the, in the quarter, John Crockett finds the end zone and goes for 30 yards. The Bison would take the lead 28 to 10. And the Bison would uh, win the game 31 to 10 behind Crockett's three touchdowns. The Bison now have won 15 road games in a row, heading into this Saturday's matchup with Indiana State. The Sycamores were the only team to beat the Bison last year. The Bison and the Sycamores kick off at 2 p.m. at Memorial Stadium. You can see the game on KVLY TV Channel 11 and also on NDSU Full Access at GoBison.com. After picking up their second win of the year, the Bison volleyball team continued their homestand against IUPUI on Saturday. The Bison are looking to make up ground on the third-ranked team in the Summit League. Let's head out to the Benson Bunker Fieldhouse for the highlights. In the first set, Jenny Fossbender gets the solo block. NDSU had five solo blocks on the night, but IUPUI would strike back. Logan Walling for the kill. The Jaguars took the set, set one, 25 to 20. And on to set two, Jenny Fossbender with the kill off, off the back row. She had eight kills on the night, but IUPUI would be too strong. Caitlin uh, Hickey with the nice placement off the top of the net. IUPUI 
uh, wins that set, 25 to 17. Uh, next in the third, they played uh, they played much better. Emily Morrison registers the kill off Mo off the Monica Claxton set. IUPUI took over from that point. Icky gets another kill. She had 10 kills in the match. Match point, IUPUI. Emily Minnick's kill attempt goes along. IUPUI takes the set. Set three, 25-22. They were, they, uh, IUPUI would win the match three sets to zero. NDSU is now two and five in the Summit League and currently sit in sixth place in the conference. Next up for NDSU, they will be traveling to Brookings, South Dakota on Saturday to take on the Jackrabbits of SDSU. They currently sit last place in the Summit League with a one and six record. NDSU won the first meeting in four sets. The NDSU club rugby team, the Lost Boys, have made a name for themselves over the past few years. This season is no exception. They are 3-0 at home with a 3-3 record overall. The Lost Boys started out the season ranked as the number 13 team in Division II USA College Rugby out of 126 teams. The Lost Boys are a young team with only a few veterans. Despite their inexperience, the Lost Boys have come out with some big wins this fall, including a 36-0 blowout against school rival University of North Dakota. This past weekend, the Lost Boys came out of the blistering cold with a 46-0 win over Minnesota State Mankato. The Lost Boys will end their season at home against the, North, against the Northern Iowa Panthers for the third place in the Northern Lights Conference. NDSU won't be making the playoffs this season, but will continue play in the spring. The NDSU men's basketball team kicks off their season next month. The Bison are looking to build off of last season's success, where they were one game away from making the NCAA tournament. The Bison are ranked seventh in the College Insider mid-major top 25 poll and are the preseason pick to win the Summit League. Taylor Braun, Lawrence Alexander, and Marshall Bjorklund have received preseason All-Summit League first team honors. Braun has also been named preseason Summit League MVP. The Bison start their season on November, 7, November 8th at 7 p.m. against Viterbo at the Bison Sports Arena. So how are you guys feeling about the upcoming basketball season? Too soon. Too, too soon? soon? Yeah. Definitely too soon. Up next on SUTV News, it's taste testing time. That story coming up. Computers and other technology have become central components of modern university life. At NDSU, the Help Desk can assist students with many of their technology needs. So let's talk tech. Staffed by both students and full-time employees, the NDSU Help Desk can be found in three locations on campus. The first is located downtown in Barry Hall 270, the second in the main library near the reference desk on the first floor, and the final and main Help Desk is located in IAC 150. In addition to on-location assistance, the Help Desk also offers support by phone at 701-231-8685, by email at ndsu.helpdesk at ndsu.edu, and by online live chat accessible on the Help Desk website. Help Desk consultants can assist with the setup and maintenance of NDSU online services, including Blackboard, Student Office 365 accounts, your NDSU electronic ID, as well as your North Dakota University System Campus Connection account. Additionally, the Help Desk offers support connecting your computer to both the NDSU wireless networks and NDSU Go print stations. Besides technical assistance, the help desk also provides large-scale printing services. Students can print posters up to 36 or 42 inches wide on high-quality glossy satin or matte finished papers. Finally, the NDSU help desk also provides an equipment checkout service at no cost to students. Equipment available for checkout includes laptops, digital camcorders and cameras, desktop speakers, audio recording equipment, and more. All equipment reservations are done online from the Help Desk website. For more information about Help Desk services, stop by one of the three locations or check out the Help Desk website, www.ndsu.edu slash ITS help underscore desk. Welcome back. NDSU students, faculty, and staff concealed themselves in booths earlier today to test hot dogs made out of beans. In the Family Life Center, participants were asked to evaluate their sensory, sensory characteristics of the hot dogs. They rated their liking on a scale from extremely disliked to extremely like and overall acceptability. The samples were randomly chosen to provide the most credible outcome of the test. 
comes to uh, a food manufacturer, they're interested in how does that Cut product taste and, and, and do people like it. So if you don't do a sensory test, you, you can't really know whether or not they like it. Even though we can make it in a lab, it doesn't mean that they, they like the product. The purpose of this test was to determine how consumers would react to replacing their meat protein with bean protein. Since NDSU is a university, they are unable to commercialize this product but can inform the food industry about its results. Well, thank you for watching this edition of SU TV News. Be sure to pick up a copy of The Spectrum and check us out on Facebook or Twitter. Have a great night.